And now we have as many equations as I've known. So if we just um, have enough algebra skills, we should be able to solve this. Let's go ahead and work that out. Okay, good. And it's good that you saw that actually the question wasn't asking us for this weight, it was asking us for the mass. So now we can use our special formula here. We got that the weight is 25,000, uh, but we know that the weight is just m times g. Well, g is just 10, so this will be 25. So what did you get as your answer? So putting in 10 here and then dividing when you get that mass is good. And maybe, uh, so that, that was good. You don't necessarily have to think of setting the two equations equal. You can just think that you solve this for t. And then you substitute it in for t over here. That's a simpler way for me to think about this. Should I put that in the picture? Is the next part about the same thing or something different? Uh, yeah, something different. Okay. So here we got um, that the greatest possible mass here we could have is 2,500. By the way, if you wanted to, you could have already plugged in mg over here. You could have said this is m2 times 10. And then, it, uh, so we're using that special formula. Okay, so I think you saw a lot of the things that you had to do here. And in fact, it was actually one of the things that you understood that messed you up. You remembered that only the volume of the submerged portion creates the buoyant force, but in this borderline case, the buoy is gonna have to be completely submerged. Okay, should we try the other parts? Okay, this looks like a good, good question. I wouldn't be surprised if you saw something similar to this on the final, too. That's pretty standard, so. All right. Yeah, okay. Well, let's take a look at part D. the buoy floats. Mm -hmm. And also you just can't solve it, so that's good. Okay, um, and then... Oh, and finally, what was our answer to part C? To part C? Yeah. It was 2,500. Right, so then its weight would have been 25,000. Well, this weight, this mass is uh, definitely smaller than that. Less than the max. Right. Yeah, less than the max. Okay. So actually, um, I shouldn't have said that you, you should you should not assume that it's going to float. You can tell. You have to check that it's going to float. It's going to float because this mass is less than the mass that we got in part C. He could have given you a question where it was going to sink, so you have to check that. Okay, okay so anyway, you were saying, what would we do? Okay, so then we have our force, that force equation. Right. Um, Can we assume that the buoy is going to be completely submerged here? Can we no. use this? No, we can't. It would be nice, but now we're not in that borderline case anymore. Yeah. That was what I, what I was checking. I was checking whether part D was just following on part C, but it's yeah. not. It's a new situation. Yeah. In fact, now we're putting in less mass. Since we're putting in less mass, 
um, the buoy is going to be able to emerge a little bit. So one thing we have to do is fix our picture. Okay. You know, this is a test where you get partial credit. Even if you can't work out the math or even set up the math, you might get some partial credit just by drawing the right picture for each part. Mm -hmm. Just by showing that in one part it's completely submerged and in another part it's only partially submerged, you should start to get some partial credit. And anyway, it helps us to solve the problem. So can we keep using this number here? Um, no, because this came from assuming it was completely submerged. Yeah. So now we're back in our old quandary. Can we keep using this number? Yeah. Yeah, because this is always completely submerged. It's all the way underneath the water. So all our numbers are still good, except this one. So we'll have to deal with that problem. So now we have to figure out that without knowing how, what volume is submerged. What volume of the buoy is submerged. So we said that since the mass is less than the maximum, we can keep thinking that we're going to float. So we put in zeros over here. Okay. Um, so now I've got one, two, three unknowns and only two equations. So we're going to have to find some way to get rid of some of these unknowns. Mm -hmm. But we know that the mass of the weight is 2,000 kilograms. So we know the weight force for two. So there's only two unknowns, right? Just the buoyant force and the tension. That's right. That's the new information that we didn't have before. Okay. Before, we hadn't written down what this was because they didn't tell us the max. But now we do. Okay, so let's go ahead and work that out. that off, so what do we get? Um, okay, so then, um, division 10. Is that what the question was asking us for? Good. 